Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits, the Motorcast. This is your host, Dave. I got to allow me Nitro driver, Randy Baker. How's it going, Randy? Not too bad. How are you doing tonight, Dave? Not bad at all. We could use some warmer weather, though. Boy, no kidding. It seems like it's the winter that never ends, isn't it? Exactly. So, first question, Randy. When did this all begin for you? drag race I ever attended was in Muncie, Indiana, and I was probably 18 years old, and the guy that built the uh, motors for my street cars at the time was, uh, him and two partners had a sea gas Corvette, and so we went to a division meet out in Muncie, Indiana. Okay. Then about 1980, well, it was in 1983, I bought a Don Ness Super Gas Camaro and raced it at the local track, which is Eddieville, Iowa, about an hour and a half away, and also at Cedar Falls. And the, the that was when, you know, everybody had the bracket race, and I was the world's worst bracket racer because all I wanted to do was go faster than I had just run the time before. <laughs> and my very last race as a bracket racer, we, we were in super gas, I put a double O three light on the guy, got down to the other end and tapped the brakes and it went it went nine eighty nine with a seven. So I lost. I got out of the car and I said, I'm never bracket racing again in my life. So I sold that car and built the the first of my line of pro street cars. It was a injected Monte Carlo. And then I I've got a 61 Pro Street Corvette that we did a lot of the fastest streetcar shootout stuff with and the, and the bigger national car shows. And uh, I had parked it when my children were at school age and I was their coach for wrestling and that type of thing, just you know, being involved in their lives. And I was painting a car as a tribute car to the Hearst Terry Oles out of a friend of mine shop. His name was Scott Galder. As you know him, he's the owner of the Nitro Madness car. Oh, yeah. And he had a, it, he had, it, it was the original Nitro Madness car, but it, it didn't have that team name back then. It was, it was a little black altered with a small block and a 671 on it. I said, well, what are you going to do with that, Scott? And he said, oh, he said, I'm going to take the blower off and just put a carburetor on it. And I said, well, why are you doing that? He goes, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to drive it. And I said, I said, really? You don't like driving? He goes, no, nah, I don't really like to drive. He said, I've tried it a couple times. He said, I like owning them. I like working on them. But he said, I don't like to drive. And he said, would you like to drive? And I said, well, doesn't anybody on the team want to? And he goes, he goes no, I don't think anybody wants to. And I said, well, you check with them. And if they don't, sure, I'd love to. And that's how I got back into it. And that would have been, oh, uh, would have been in the, early 2000s, 2002, somewhere around in there. And we started racing. Actually, back then, there wasn't that many places you could run a car like that. So we'd go out on a Friday or Saturday and make a few runs on it and then uh, go out for pizza and think we all had a great time. And then eventually the nostalgia thing hit and we were right there ready to to participate in all of that. We started running with a few older, older, the outlaw few older guys out of Texas uh, when they'd come a little ways north up to Mocan or something. And uh, then I got asked by, so we ran that car and built a, a couple of different variations of it. And then I got asked to drive for Virgil Hartman and his Nitro Funny car and once I drove that car with a big pump and big bag on it, you'd stand on the flames and come up over the roof. That was that was just it. I was I was hooked. Now, and uh, now, so then, go ahead. Now who 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 did you license with for your fun, for the funny car? Who did I license with? Yeah, when you got your funny car license, who 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 did your licensing? That was uh, I actually well the. At that time, you had what you called a, a special fuels license, and that was kind of before they actually came out with a funny car license. 
they really didn't have a, a designation for the cars that ran nitro, but was like an altered or, or even, you know, front engine dragster. Oh, so you so we, you were able to drive either or with that license back then, right, you're saying? Yeah, right, right exactly. Ah. And then, so then we got that, and then when I was driving Danny Miller's car, then I went ahead and got the funny car license and that special fuel license so I could drive, you know, anything in that range. Right. And now they've got it, so you have a funny car license, which is good for an altered, but if you're going to drive a dragster... Then you have to make a couple crossover runs to run a, a front engine dragster or even a rear engine dragster. Right. So, so go ahead with your what 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 other cars cars did you drive? Uh, so after Virgil's car, then um, Danny Miller was building a new Maverick and. He needed a driver for a race out of Indianapolis, and so uh, Dan Brown called me and said, hey, Danny's looking for a driver. Will you do it for us? And so we went out there, and we went to the semifinals, uh, the first race together, and then I, the next race we went to, I believe, was the March meet in that car, and uh, I drove for Danny for a few years until... He was ready to retire, and then I built a Sin City car for Norm Wellman, and we ran that car for about three years, and uh, currently I'm building a new fuel altered for Jesse Anderson, who is out of Albert Lee, Minnesota, and we're going to run that car, and I'm also we're going to be driving the... Uh, it's the ex Roger Stanky car. The gentleman owns it, lives in Wisconsin. And we hope to get it out and test early this summer. So this summer should be fairly busy. Yeah, sounds like it. So now, what the uh, Sin, Sin City car what was the fastest runtime you'd have with that, with that one? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the question. I said, with the Sin City funny car, what was the quickest time you had with that one? Mm, I, I don't remember. I think the best time we ran with that car was somewhere around 620s. We had a magneto problem that uh, we were just unable to put our finger on. We checked everything, sent the mag back in a couple times, and it was okay, but what it was doing was it was okay when you'd fire it up and warm it up, but once the mag got warm, then it would start dropping cylinders. And uh, so we fought that for most of the life of that car. So now, when you so, when you first started started driving, uh, you know, when you first started drag racing, what, what drivers were inspirational to you back then? Just any of the guys that, that went fast. I mean, everybody's here was Don Garlick. Um, Frank Oglesby is a personal friend and honored to have him as a good friend. He was driven funny cars for a long time, and as you remember, he used to have the Mellow Yellow sponsorship. Right. And uh, he's he's been a racer for quite a long time. He's very instrumental. David Pace used to drive for the Carroll Brothers, and uh, he's... Uh, I'm, I'm honored to be, call him a friend also. He's taught me a ton of things about clutches and a uh, very, very sharp guy. How about Ed Dace McCulloch? Uh, what was that? I said, how about Ed Dace McCulloch? Oh, yeah. Everybody likes the Ed and the snake and the mongoose and that whole thing they had going was incredible. Ed's win in Indy, I don't think anybody will ever forget that. Yeah. I remember in 79, I believe it was, was the first uh, time I ever went to the U.S. Nationals. And uh, what an event. You know, you could walk over the track at that time, and they, uh, they had like a 
I don't know, you walk up the stairs and go through, uh, it was a walkway, but it was all enclosed, but there's enough holes in it and spaces that you could, as you're walking across there, you could look out and see what was happening on the track. And, and that's, uh, you know, that's something you don't get to do nowadays. But a uh, lot, lot of fun back then. Yeah. Then you, get, you had the guys like Ray, Raymond Beetle and, uh, you know, the Ro, 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 Roland Leon. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, met Roland when I was driving Danny's car. And um, Vern Motes, a pretty famous funny car racer from here in Iowa, alcohol car, uh, was very good friends with Roland. And uh, so I I knew a, a little more about Roland, you know, than than probably just the average guy, but I had never met him until I met him down in St. Louis with uh, Steve Reyes. And uh, a really neat guy and offered to, to help me whenever I called. And it's, he was one of the true icons of the sport. Man, he's, he's, he's still out there. Yeah, yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah. Uh, have you ever met Don Garlitz? I've met him a couple of times and was was able to talk to him. Uh, we were at the World Series one year, and we uh, happened to be staying in the same motel. And we were staying out there after breakfast and probably talked for, you know, over an hour, just visiting about cars and events and, and how, the, how the nostalgia of events were really taking over and coming on strong. And, so he's a really neat guy, easy to talk to, and uh, just a lot of fun. Dale Pauly, he's he's one of my big guys that I consider a hero, and he's he moved, you know, back here to Missouri, so he's somewhat close. And him and I get to talk quite often. That's that's always a learning experience whenever you visit with a guy like him or Mark Lee. Oh yeah, the the Dale Pauly's War Eagle. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great looking cars, man. I mean, just killer paint. And Dale was a, was a winner and whatever. He jumped into drive. He's just one of those guys with the natural talent. Yeah. That's, that's a good thing about nostalgia of funny cars. You get to see the way the funny cars yeah. are, the funny cars is the way you want to see them back in the old days. I, I, I'm not too much into the newer funny cars, NHRA. Even. It's tough, you know. I mean, it, it's cool that they're that fast, and when you're standing on the starting line, I mean, it's it's super impressive. You know, you, you can't take anything away from them. But, right. Um, the the actual nostalgia cars have a lot more crack and pop to them in the motors than the than the late model, you know, big show stuff. And uh, I don't think I've talked to any big show drivers. You know, Tim Wilkerson's a great guy. And I don't think I've ever talked to any of them that don't just love the nostalgia racing, you know, and, and like to go, want, you know, go to the March meet and that type of thing. You know, really enjoy the World Series. And, and you know, they they all uh, really enjoy what we're doing in our, our niche in the market, you know. Right. So how how was the, how was the experience of running the March, March meet? How was the experience of running the March meet? Yeah, because a lot of people say, "Oh, you got you got to go out there to Bakersfield." Uh, there's nothing like Bakersfield. It's it is it, it's cooler than you've ever heard. You, you go there and and I mean you can you can literally feel the history when you just pull into the place. Um, I remember when I was out there, the, the first time I went out there with um, Frank Owsley in the Crop Duster Top Fuel Car, we, we won the event. But prior to that, I was walking around the pits and just seeing, I mean, everybody, you know, that was there. And Gary Turner came up and was talking to me and just, just really a great time. And, I walked up the stairs to do a, a, an interview with Mike English, and as I walk up the stairs, it's like, just think of all the heroes that have walked up these stairs ahead of you. I mean, you know, Purdell and the Ace. I mean, just name the whole list. They've all raced at Bakersfield. I mean, everybody's been there. 
Right. And our World Series is, is neat. I mean, it's a neat race and neat history, but the, it, it, it's not that the March meet is any better than our World Series, but it's just a really... It's just a really neat place to go because of all the history that's happened there. Yeah. And, of course, it's March, so it's starting to get really nice out here, there, and it's still cold here, so that probably helps <laughs> make it a better event, too. Yeah. Yeah, California has all the nostalgia and nitro funny car drivers out there. Like, uh, I, I, th I think in California they got nitro, nitro nostalgia funny car drivers on every block out there. Yeah, no kidding. Well, the the first hot rod reunion I went to out there. Now you got to remember back here, if you had, you know, if you had three or four nitro cars, that was a lot at an event. And and this would, you know, was a few years ago and. I went out there, and they had 84 top fuel cars in that cackle fest running at the same time. Wow. And, uh, I mean, it, it's just amazing. You know, the, the push starts and watch them fire up and go out there and sit there, and, you know, they run them so lean. They've got the huge flames coming out of them. And, I mean, 84 of these cars lined up at a diagonal the whole length of Bakersfield drag strip. And... I mean, and like I say, here at that time, you, you were lucky if you had four, you know, real big percent nitro cars at an event. And, you know, now the Midwest guys, when we had the DRO series, I mean, we would have, you know, 15 to 20 cars trying to try for the uh, 16 or 8 car field. So, uh, you know, it really caught on and, and, and was a pretty neat deal. Yeah. Then an, an, an a good a good thing we have now is that Funny Car Chaos event. Yeah, those those events are pretty neat. I'm looking forward to taking part in one of those. Um, it it just sounds like the early days of the fuel altered stuff that we ran, and I I think it's uh, I think Chris Gray's really really is on to something pretty fun to do. Yeah, you just bring bring whatever kind of funny car you want there. Yeah, exactly. Just. Run what you brung and hope you brung enough is the, how that deal works. Yeah, you could have a night show going against the alcohol over there. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they, had, they had a bunch of cars at that race last year in, in Denton, and I would I would bet that the one over at Havana in southern Illinois, that's probably going to be a pretty good event. I know Billy Dee's coming out from the East Coast, and... It, uh, it should be quite a race. Yeah, we got John Hale. Yep, John's a neat guy, isn't he? Really, really done well in the sport, and and uh, there's been a lot of help to a number of guys in the sport, including myself. Then, of course, uh, ba ba Baz, Baz Young's going to be there. Right, yep, yeah, Baz will be there, and, uh, you know, he's always got nice equipment, and uh, after we parked the Sin City car, I worked with Bass for a couple of seasons. And, uh, yeah, neat, neat guy, a lot of fun to talk to. Yeah, see, see with, with Great Lakes Driveway, I love going to Great Lakes Driveway, but the only problem is they only got two Nitro Funny cars every year for Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend. You know, I, I love Bass and I love Doc Holiday, but we need to get some more cars in there. Right, right. The, uh, both, both good guys, and I and I've raced against and crewed with both of them, and uh, but yeah, that it, it, we went up. To, we've been to that Great Lakes Dragway a few times. That's that's really a, a pretty neat little track to go to. They do a nice job of taking care of the spectators. And of course, with Baz and uh, Doc, you got Jerry Nitro Newman doing the uh, crew for both of them. Taking care of the right. nitro, yeah. Yeah, Jerry's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, Jerry's a good guy. Gave me a lot of help getting the Sin City car up and going. Um, he's, he's a he's a good guy. Had a lot of you know a lot of years of of doing this. So it gives him a pretty wide base of uh, 
you know, knowledge to pick, pick from. Yeah. So let me ask you. Some, let me ask you some, Randy. What What was it like getting behind the wheel for the first time of a nitro car? It's It's the coolest thing that you could ever do. I mean, it really is. The uh, when when I drove Virgil's car, I mean that that just plain did it for me. I'm sitting there with the uh, you know the clutch in, holding on the brake, and they're taking the throttle stop the Virgil runs off the car and it's sitting there and the, and the flames are just bouncing up past the window on each side where you're just waiting and I'm like man this is so cool and we went out there and, and it spun the tires uh, I can't remember who I had the first round but it spun the tires and, and that was the first time I'd ever driven a, a high percent nitro car or a funny car, either one. I mean, I always driven the, you know, the, the alters. And uh, so I came back. He goes, well, "What do you think?" I said, "I said, Virgil, this is great fun." He goes, "Well, you want to do it again?" I said, "Of course I do." <laughs> and uh, the, and so I was going to race Bodie in the next round, and he was in the Trans Am that had run like five seventies back then, and. Uh, and I'm rolling up beside him in the, in the Miss Scarlet Charger, and I'm and I'm thinking that I'm gonna. I, I'm just convinced that this car is just so cool that I'm gonna be able to run with him. And uh, the light turned green. We both hit it about the same time, and uh, unfortunately, my car struck the tires. But it's uh, it, it's just an awe-inspiring event when you stand on these cars and the header flames come out of them it's it, there's just truly nothing like it and the thing that, that with the funny car versus the altered is the funny cars are so quiet inside when they put the body down you know the headers are outside the body and you've got the the tin inside there you know kind of isolating you from the chassis in it and it's really quiet inside the car of course as opposed to outside as loud as they are Right. But, uh, yeah, just just really an experience that, that I've just been very lucky to be able to do. So there was no claustrophobia for you when the hood came down? There, there was no question what? No claustrophobia for you when they put the hood down on you? No, you know, I've heard a number of guys that have had that problem. That, that have actually bought a car, you know, had it running at home with the body up, and when they when they got their suit strapped in at the track, and and then they shut the body down, they they've they've literally torn stuff up trying to get out of the car because it, it just it just wasn't what they expected, and it wasn't what they wanted, and uh, that I'm just when I get in the car and I'm strapped in, I'm I'm just so comfortable and relaxed it's it's just a it's just a great place to be behind the wheel and know that you know that everything falls on your shoulders from this point forward right so so randy what are some of your favorite tracks to run on the, the, there's just a, a little bit of an echo in most of your and it coming from your mm -hmm. end and i i had a hard time hearing mm -hmm. the question so so what, what are some of your favorite tracks to run on randy well, I love Eddyville. That's that's our local track. It's it's super nice track. Um, Cordova is probably one of my most favorite tracks, and and winning the World Series is is really one of the highlights of of my career. Um, but it, as far as a pure speed standpoint, up there at Martin, Michigan. Um, you know, they've got a bunch of trees around there, and usually it's cool, and that track has a lot of bite. That's not saying the others don't, but I'm just saying that one does. And you can really put the horsepower down up there in Martin. That's, it's a lot of fun to run that track also. But uh, Byron, we've had we've had good success over there. I, I like doing that. Um, but I, I'd say... My favorite tracks would probably be a tie between Eddyville and Cordova, you know, would be my favorite tracks to, if someone says, hey, we're going to have a race and, and, you know, where are you going to be? And I would say either one of those would be the 
track to go to. Cedar Falls, uh, race there a lot, nice people running it. But the, the Cordova is, is true, it has a little special special place for quarter mile, and I'd pick Eddieville as the, as the eighth mile track favorite. Now, how, how many wins have you had in a funny car racing? We, when we were match racing in with Nitro Madness, we had a had a really good win percentage. Um, I I can think of two wins in the funny cars. Right off the bat, we went to the semifinals at Cedar Falls, and that was the best that we did in the Sin City car. And uh, but there's a there's a tough group of characters that run these funny cars. It's it's not an easy. It, whenever you've won one of those events, you you've accomplished something. So now, Randy, what what would you consider to be the milestones of your drag racing career? I would have to say when we won the World Series, uh, we've managed to do that twice, and that's uh, that's really a, a high point of the career. One of the one of the earlier high points was when Scott and I drove all the way to Great Bend, Kansas, and the nostalgia race they had there. We won a Wally for winning that, and uh, that that was really something to drive that far away and and come away with a Wally. That was that was pretty impressive. Now, do you, do you remember uh, your your uh, speed at that one? So, that would have been probably it. W- it would have been less than two ten. It w- it would have been two o four to two o seven, some somewhere in there. And we were running six thirties in that car towards the end with it. Now, who who did you guys run against? Uh, we raced the uh, Smith Brothers out of Dallas, Texas, at uh, Front Engine Dragster. Mm. We were we were laughing after the race, and the the driver was over talking to me. Who has since since become a a good friend of nice bunch of guys on that team and then uh he says i was kind of afraid to fire that thing off because i asked him how much he put in the tank he says he put the whole can and the label he said just count to five and sit low he said (laughs) 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 but that i don't know if you've ever been to great bend kansas but it's an old uh, airstrip base that's kind of shaped like the runways are like a triangle so you run down one side of it and without an exaggeration you could easily stop without a parachute there it's that long of runway and shut off i was kidding with the guy that says you guys i'm gonna need to pack a lunch if you're gonna take this long to get down here the next time it was it's really a long long track nice safe shut down it's, it's a fun place to run so, so do you think you'd you'd ever get behind the wheel of a dragster? Oh, I tease those guys a lot about just being a pipe rack. But if it if it was a front engine dragster, I I would probably enjoy driving one. Yes, they're, they're a completely different beast than than the alters of the funny cars. Um, but I I think I would enjoy racing one of those cars at some point before I call it quit. Yeah. Even if it's just to drive it, you know, for an event or two. Right. So now you were talking about the World Series at Cordova. It, it, it's good to, that we have the World Series back at Cordova. Yeah, that's that's a nice move that they went back there. I think it was a mistake to move it to Memphis, but um, I I think that moving it back there was a, was a great choice. And, uh, of course, we raced for... Scott Gardner and his, his wife Laura for years, you know, when they were uh, part owners of Eddieville and owners of Cordova, and they had their hand in Cedar Falls as well. So we did a, a lot of match racing, a lot of racing for Scott through the years. And he, he really continued that event 
you know, building on the event, the success. Um, you know, they have have a great crowd over there that follows that event. There's there's people that plan their vacations and and just all, all around that event. So it's very good they moved it back there. Yeah. So are you gonna, are you going to be attending uh, World Series this year? I don't believe we're going to be participants, but yes, I'll be there. Uh, I'll be at the track for the weekend. Yes. Yeah, I know uh, Joe, Joe Haas and uh, John Lawson will be up there running. Yeah, aren't those cars impressive to watch? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, they they got they got the they got the Motri uh, fire going. Yeah, yeah. That Tom and uh, has been working on that program for a long time, and uh, really, really has it down. We were talking at PRI about it, and he said, he said it's it's really come together and been a you know been a, a neat combination to run. And uh, I mean, what a crowd pleaser! I mean, those the flames on those cars when they stand on them are incredible, and. John Lawson's uh, detail on his cars and paintwork is is just phenomenal. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those cars up close, especially Joey Haas's car. I mean, incredible paint on those cars. Yes, I have to agree with you on that one. The the green, and then they got the orange. Right. Yep. Yep. That that green one has a bunch of. Artwork and airbrush work down in it that you have to be standing by the car to see. But yeah, it, it's really fun. And you know, Joe's done really well and, and done a great job behind the wheel of that car. They they put on a good show and those cars run hard. Yeah, the the quick draw, the quick draw, and the run runway. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. Yeah, them. Yeah, mo. mo- Tom Motry is a great guy too. I've I've i had him on the air three times already. Oh, have you really? Yeah. yeah. Tom is Tom is one of those racers that will. I mean, if you got a question at the track or need help or or need a tool or anything to work on what you're doing, he's he's the first guy to be ready to lend it to you. He's given me a lot of help through the years, and there's there's a guy that that really understands the whole car and the combination and what it takes to, you know, make them run and stay together. So you think you, you think you'd ever drive a drive one of those cars with the big pumps in there with the big big header flames? Yes, we uh, we've got a. Uh, on this only, we're going to run it with the combination we have in it this year, and either uh, probably next year we'll run a motor style tune up in it, and and for one hundred percent positive, we'd be doing it the year after. But but I expect that next summer that's what we're going to have in the car. Yeah, late, late, Labor Day weekend at the uh, Great Lakes Dragway, uh, Motree is running against uh, G- Galter. He's running against who? Scott Galter. Oh, is he racing, Scott? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Scott's, boy, they've had a lot of success. They put Troy Martin's combination in that car. And, uh, you know, Scott's a good friend of mine. We're, we're, I've known him since way before high school. And then the three years that they've run that as a high percent car, I think he was telling me they've only burnt like three pistons in that car in all that time. You know, that's that's just a, a phenomenal string of success there. And Scott, the car's always prepped well. It's a, you know, it's it's really he's he's kept it together as a really good team. Yeah, Ray, Radar is a good driver. Oh boy, yeah. How, how can you get better than radar? I mean, he's excellent at it. Then, uh, of course, Tom Tom Motry has Tim Cohn in driving for him. You're right. Yeah. The uh, those guys are, you know, they've just been racing for so long that they've they've really got a good handle on what they're doing. And radar, I've raced against him. For years, I mean, you know, we'd match race the orange crate or something, and Raiders t- Radar's tough competitor. 
And then but but buddy buddy hall's buddy hall's a uh, few alters coming along he's, he's hoping to get it out by august yeah have you seen some pictures of that car online yep sure have <laughs> that's an impressive looking car isn't it yeah and that alan um mittendorf he's building a new car i've seen i've seen a few photos of it that looks like it's going to be a good car also it's uh there's a number of guys that are building some you know, some neat stuff to come out. But I think I think you'll like the lips of the solder that I'm putting together. Then Mike Mike Minnick's got a new Shy Town Hustler coming out. I um I talked to Troy and he told me that that uh, we were talking about rear ends at the time. And he told me that they were going a different direction, but I haven't talked to Mike and I, I haven't seen any photos. I'm not I didn't know yeah, what he's, they're doing. Yeah, he's he's building the he's building the brand new Shy Town Hustler. Yeah, that'll that'll they've always done done real well with that you know, that name brand and the car. Then of course Troy has the fee altered. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, are they gonna have that out again as well this year? Yeah, I believe Troy's gonna be doing stuff with that one. Okay, good. Good deal. Yeah, I mean, you know, and how about Mike Minnick? I mean, you know, third generation drag racer, and you know, neat guy. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I interviewed Mike too. I had I had Troy on twice. My I've I've had all these guys on. Scott Galter, I did interview Scott. Did interview Radar. Everybody's been on my show. <laughs> wow, sounds like it. I'm glad I got invited. Sound like I'm in good company. I I try to give you uh. Night show guys, you know, the, especially you nostalgia guys, I want to give you guys some exposure out there. That's, that, that's really cool that you do that. That's uh, it's beneficial to us. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of sorry to see the DRO series, you know, fade away. But uh, like you say, Chris Gray's and that funny car chaos. That's a that's a pretty neat deal for us funny car guys and. There's there's quite a few races that we can run the Aldridge at also, and and that's uh, you know at the same time you get these nitro cars in front of people, you you build some new fans and a bigger fan base, so it's a you know it's just a win win deal for us and the track. Right. So so let me ask you this question, Randy. It, it, throughout your drag racing career, have you ever, ever had any accidents or near accidents? In Danny Miller's car, uh, I pulled it into high gear at Cordova, and it pulled the front end up, and it drifted over towards the wall, and we flattened the headers. And it got back to the pit, and he goes, he goes, I've already looked at the video. No, it wasn't your fault. He said, I saw the wheels cranked over to the right. <laughs> and I said, yeah, well, I was trying to keep it off the air. It just wouldn't respond. And, and uh and then that so that's the closest I've ever come to 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 actually you know get in the wall was we brush those headers and uh, then when the Sin City car blew up at the World Series that was that was a pretty big boomer but um, no that's that's about it I've uh, in the when you get those alders up there on the top end with no wings I mean they get pretty loose and. We had trouble one year with uh, the tires we were running and the Nitro Madness car, which always, you know, we could get down the track. That thing would, would leave the line with the front in the air and smoking the tires at the same time. It was, we just, just ended up with some bad tires and couldn't, couldn't seem to get it calmed down enough to run. And I remember down at Eddyville, the, the thing was nearly sideways going through the finish line down there. That was kind of hairy. One year at, at Eddyville, after we put air launch chutes on the car, we tested them, no kidding. I mean, we've tested them like 20 times in the shop. Perfect. Out. Every time. When we were down at Eddyville with it, and we were running back then about a 178 miles an hour, 175. and as a driver, you know when you've 
either hit the button for the shoot or you've pushed the parachute so that, that you're, you know about when they're going to hit. And, you know, I, I hit the, the, we had an air button that launched the shoots at that time also. And I hit it and, and I'm like, they're not coming out. And I hit the button a few times and then, and just nothing. So, with a solid suspension car, when you pull on the brakes, generally what happens as it's trying to slow down, it starts bouncing also. And the only and you clearly are not slowing down with rear tires in the air. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself as I'm working the brake and you're looking at the the retaining wall, the end of the track coming at you, and you gotta let go of that brake lever and that that was an interesting uh, thought as it goes through your head. It's like, man, it's like, I'm, I've already crashed. I just haven't hit anything yet. This is not going to end well. I kept kept working it. And as you know, at Eddieville, they had that legend car track. It was an oval asphalt at the end of it. So I entered in what would be turn four, and the car flew through the air to about the middle of that corner. And I'm back on the brakes as soon as it landed. I'm like, you know, th this is it. We're going to get that wall. And I cranked the wheel to the right. And just right within inches of spare, the car made that corner. And, and you know, by now, you know, I've the fuel's off, the motor's all dead. So it's just rolling along. And I'm thinking, man, I can't believe I say that. And I hear a poof out the back and then a, as a, and then something's dragging behind I'm like no way no way and I get I get out when I get the car stopped and go back and look and one of the shoots has come out and it came out on after I was already had it shut down on that little straightaway and the other one was like a 30 second of an inch from coming out the wires were just a smidge too long and that's why they didn't deploy but it's like I, it, it felt like a big wily Ike, wily coyote moment when you heard that thing come out after all the excitement was over. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, I think it was no, it was the Nitro Madness car. We were at one of the World Series, and we just made a nice pass. You know, it probably ran you know six thirty at you know two fifteen two twenty. I hit the parachutes and there's nothing. And I mean, it, it's like, oh, come on, you know. So Cordova has a fairly long shutdown. So I slowed it down and got it stopped. And the guy comes running up to me at the end. I'm still in the car. And he goes, he goes, it's all right. It's all right. They've got your parachutes on the line. And I'm like, you know, it's really not all right that the parachutes are on the starting line and I'm down here. <laughs> well, as it turns out that, uh, you know, the the silver fire shroud that goes over the shroud lines, right? they had put the bolt through that, but the shroud line had pulled back. And so the loop on the shroud line wasn't actually bolted to the car. So when I pulled the parachute, they came out of speed and just pulled out of there like a like a straw coming out of the paper covering, you know, and 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 so that was how they came off the car and how the parachutes were flying. And so was the car over there just on opposite ends of the racetrack. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. We figured out because we had run the car um, the week prior down at Eddyville, and and apparently. There was just enough speed difference between the two that they stopped the car fine down there. But uh, when we when we were at Cordova on the quarter mile, it just zipped them right off the back of the car. But that was that's about the only that's the only kind of uh, you know drama or excitement close to close to actually having an incident in the car. Well, uh, all of it's all of it's kind of amusing at this point. Well, well, knock on wood, you never get any accidents at all. No, that would that would not be good. Well, Randy, Randy, I, I get forty five minutes for the show, so we got twenty seconds left. So I want to thank you for your time for the interview tonight. 
Well, thank you for calling, Dave. It was, it was an honor to have you call me, and I'm glad we got to visit about some stuff. And, well, I'll get you on again in a future interview when you get your cars going. Boy, that, that'd be great. We'll, uh, I'll get you some pictures of them, and, uh, 